So a few years ago, I decided to learn how to solve the Rubik's Cube without any help. It took a long time to memorize all the moves and algorithms, but I eventually got there after a few weeks. Since I enjoyed it so much, I decided to give the 4x4 a try. It was obviously a lot more difficult, but there was another unexpected challenge. I kept getting the new moves mixed up with the earlier ones I had learned with the 3x3. But another thing I didn't expect, I encountered the same problem when I went back to the 3x3 just in the opposite direction. I was taking longer to remember the correct moves because I was getting mixed up with the newer 4x4 steps I'd memorized. In psychology, we call this concept interference. And there are two types, as I just mentioned before. Proactive interference, which is when older material that you learned inhibits your ability to encode and store new material. And then retroactive interference, which is the other way around, when new information that you learn inhibits your ability to retrieve previously learned material. You might be able to think of a few examples of this in your own life, but here are a few more. People often find that when they're learning multiple new languages at the same time, there's often interference, especially those languages are similar, for example, Spanish and French. So you might spend, I don't know, half an hour studying French verbs and then another half hour studying Spanish verbs. And inevitably, you're going to find the two languages mixing each other up, either the old mixing up with the new or the new mixing up with the old. Another example might be if you were switching from one sport to a similar one. For example, from netball to basketball, all the years of training that you had with netball might start to proactively interfere with trying to learn new skills in basketball. There's a pretty famous study performed by McGock and McDonald all the way back in 1931, in which participants were first asked to memorize a list of two syllable adjectives. For example, this one, wait a little bit, then memorize a second list, wait a little bit again, and then see how many they could remember from the first list. They repeated this several times, just changing the words used in the second list, and found something pretty interesting. The more similar or related the words in the second list were to the first, for example these, which have very similar meanings, the less accurate participants were in recalling words from the first list, suggesting that interference was occurring. In fact, looking at a graph of all the results, you can see that when the words in the second list were things like synonyms, that is the same meaning, or antonyms, that is words of an opposite meaning, but obviously still related to the original, the poorer the participants scored when it came to recall. But as the amount of similarity between the words in the second list to the first decreased, the less likely participants were to forget what the words in that original list were. Oh, by the way, since the later words were affecting the first, would this be an example of proactive or retroactive interference? Well, because this is the newer stuff going back to affect the old, it would be retroactive interference. Now, as clear as this might seem, that's not to say that interference theory is perfect. Despite sounding very plausible, and I'm guessing many of you may have been able to relate to some of the things in this lesson so far, and despite having been replicated in lab settings, there are some limitations to this theory. For example, critics point out that these lab experiments mostly only use tests of recall, which are especially prone to interference. When it comes to encoding semantic memory, for example, learning, memorizing a passage of text, there seems to be less interference happening. So is interference a thing? Well, like many things in psychology, more study is needed. But if it at least applies the test of recall, then that's very useful to know, especially if you're a student. All right, thanks for watching and see you in the next lesson.